Welcome back to Soka Islander ATV. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a walkthrough of this 1000 watt sound system I'm installing on my ride, and will give you my personal review at the end. I hope this helps someone, as this is a subject I get tons of questions about, so let's get right into this video. Let me take you through the setup, and I'll be listing the items as I go through them. We got a 1000 watt 4 channel marine grade amplifier, a universal Bluetooth receiver and remote control, an 8 gauge amplifier installation kit, some extra speaker wire in case it's needed, nylon cable sleeve, a ground loop noise isolator, a 4 male RCA audio adapter cable, 4 6.5 inch 250 watt marine tower speakers, and finally, some miscellaneous items not shown are marine heat shrink tubing and flex pin banana plugs for the speaker connections. So a quick walkthrough of how this system is going to work. The amplifier kit comes with 6 feet of 8 gauge OFC power cable. Spade terminals are provided and this leads to a fuse holder. The battery positive cable connects to the two amplifier power cables and a power cable for the MTX Bluetooth remote control. One goes to power this thing ground. The battery ground cable connects to the two amplifier ground cables and a ground cable for the MTX Bluetooth remote control as well. The amplifier has a blue remote wire that connects to the blue wire on the MTX Bluetooth remote control. On the back, you have a line in RCA jacks that I then connected to this 4 male RCA audio adapter to a 3.5 millimeter male end. This then connects to the ground loop isolator that the MTX manual stated I would need. Finally, the ground loop isolator connects directly to the female end of the MTX Bluetooth remote control. On this side here, you have your 8 pin connector for your speakers out. You simply run enough speaker wire to where the speakers will be mounted and connect the positive end and negative end to the push pin connectors on the speakers. Now this might seem a bit overwhelming, which I can say it's completely not. But by no means is it an easy task either. It's something that's not too difficult when you lay it out and plan it. Let's start by removing the necessary parts of the quad to get to the wiring. Remove the passenger seat if equipped, driver's seat, and the dash kit. Next you want to remove the gauge support while being careful of the gauge wiring. The screen is simply held in place with plastic tabs. To run wires correctly, I'm going to have to remove the side paneling. Next you want to remove the positive and negative battery terminals. I also am going to have to remove the battery and tray. 
There's three M6 hedge fling screws holding the battery plate in place. Remove the fixation plate and then the battery. Next, we're going to loosen up the battery tray to make it easier to install the amplifier and run our wiring. Now my plan of action is to mount the amplifier under the battery in an empty space where I can see there's sufficient room for input cables, wiring, and the fuse holder. Here I've gotten everything kind of laid out where it's going to go with only one speaker attached. Off camera, I took the time to solder the connections and add marine grade heat shrink tubing over them. I want to make sure my connections are in working order and that this setup is going to function. I also am adding nylon sleeves over the wiring to not damage the cables while riding. Everything seems to be in working order, so it's time to connect the remaining three speakers. Here you can see I can either adjust the volume on my phone or the MTX Bluetooth control. This is also true for switching back and forth between music. My amplifier here is on the safe side of about 40% capacity. However, I'm going to adjust it to about 70% when I place it into its mounting position. For my next step, I'm going to be disassembling the mounting clamp on the speakers to position them into place. The socket head cap screws are more than long enough for my needs, so I might need to grind them down. I'm placing the rear speakers near the edge of the metal bumper so the sound can go around the rear passenger seat. For the front speakers, my initial idea of mounting onto the bumper is not going to work. The mounting clamps interfere with the headlights unfortunately, so I'm going to be mounting these speakers onto the Lynx rack. Once I position them and made up my mind, I will run the speaker wire to their final location. As for now, I need to figure out next where to install my Bluetooth remote receiver. The Bluetooth remote receiver comes with three different options of mounting, however, I measured the dash kit and it has just enough clearance for a flush look and I'll also be cutting these wires and adding spade connectors so when I need to access this area. I've now ran all the cables neatly throughout the quad. 
I simply followed along the existing wiring to not complicate things. As you can also see, I've now secured the battery tray and battery to its original location off camera. There is an excess of speaker wires, so I'll be cutting that in a bit and soldering the wires, leaving just a small amount of slack. It's now time to reassemble the remaining pieces of the ATV back together. This includes the black plastic extension and right hand side panel. Be careful squeezing this into place. You don't want to break off the connecting tabs. Secure them with the Phillips head screw and plastic push pins. Secure the gauge to the plastic gauge support and pop it back into place. I carefully pop the dash kit with the newly mounted Bluetooth receiver followed by the driver and passenger seat. The following day, I decided to give my ATV a good wash as it would also give me an idea as to how the sound system does in wet conditions. I was pleasantly surprised as there was no buffering or interference during the wash. And I know I'll be receiving the question, so here's the answer. This is the sound system out on the trail on full blast. Amplifier settings to the max. Like I've stated before, I can control the skips and volume through either the Bluetooth receiver or my cell phone. Let me step away here from the ATV so you can get an idea of music volume and the range of the receiver. This is approximately 30 35 feet back, I would say, and as you can tell, there's no lag and the music sound is clear. I will say, these 6.5 inch tower speakers have a good amount of bass. Now I have very little to complain about the system, but here's some things that can be improved upon. The speaker connections do not work the best, specifically on the rear speakers. I think it's because mud slings onto the flex pin connectors that it makes the wiring brittle and eventually breaks off from so much bouncing around on the trails. I wish they were RCA connections, or at least an alternative that would provide a better solution to this problem. Speaking of bouncing around, I bought nylon locking hex nuts to replace the original ones on the speaker mounting brackets. While trail riding, I found that all four mounts would loosen in no time. I was thinking of using Loctite thread lock, but so far, the nylon locking nuts have been working fine. This particular Rockville package is a good bang for the buck. However, I wish it was a 100% complete plug and play. 
That's actually part of the reason why this isn't an install video. By no means am I an audio expert, so who knows if I install this correctly. It just seems that with this package, there was a lot of additional parts for me to buy to make this system work. For example, the noise isolator, the RCA audio adapter, the amp wiring kit, additional speaker wire, marine grade heat shrink tubing. If I had to be honest, there's probably more integrated sound systems out there for about this same price, which I'll talk about in a minute. And my final negative, which really has nothing to do with the sound system itself, but I wish there was more mounting options for me to place these speakers. I mean really, where am I supposed to place them? If you have any other ideas of where to place these speakers, please help me out and share your ideas down below in the comments. And finally, the final cost for this setup, which is a grand total of $529, of which I'll list a breakdown of items here for you. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know down below your thoughts on this audio system. Do you believe it was worth the price? Is there better options, better brands, different setups? I'm always looking for and am open to all feedback. With all that said, please give this video a like if you found it informative and subscribe for more off-roading content coming your way. As always, have fun, ride safe, and we'll catch you here on the next one at SoCal Outlander ATV.